wanted to share something really briefly. Ooh, oh, the mic's on. Okay. Yeah. I get Maybe. Sometimes. So, I always like to share where songs come from because I think the stories behind the songs are important. So, hey. So, when I was working at the Highlander Research and Education Center, I was in charge of youth programs. And one of the participants was the Power Youth Center for Social Change. And they used this song when people were coming into their neighborhoods to foreclose their homes. And so they band together and sang this song in the face of the people coming to take their homes from them. So whenever you sing this song, and I hope you do, I hope you also share that this song came from Miami, um, particularly with Power Youth Center for Social Change. So just share the story as well as the song. Sí. 
Yo vengo de una familia que nunca te deja caer. I come from a fake smile. I come from your weak if you have feelings. But as I begin to walk to school, I think of the perfect day where it will not be a fake smile anymore. I dream of the day that I will be able to be me as well as everyone else, where we will fit in, where we are open arms to anyone. I will be lightened by everyone I see as a beautiful smile will be printed on the image of their face. I dream of the day that police will ask the why, not just the what, where no president will make a law inflicting any sort of pain on the people who live here. I dream of the day that I will start singing for no reason like a Disney movie. The day that everyone will actually sing back. I'm dreaming of the day that no one will feel the need or luxury to hurt or even kill someone. No one will be sentenced incorrectly. Free tacos will be handed out in every corner store. No judgy faces will come upon anyone when you speak your truth. I'm dreaming of the day that we could be happy around one another. I come from hope and an imagination that will never stop. Imagination that will make where I come from much better. I'm dreaming of the day that you could come from there too.
sitting in front of you right now, but <laughs> this feels like the best place to make sure our digital friends out there in the world have access and can hear us. They work to divide our communities because there is strength in numbers. We must acknowledge we are on indigenous land, the place where we are was stolen through death and destruction. We must acknowledge the legacies of slavery and anti-blackness, the place where we are was built and enriched through exploitation. We must acknowledge generations of suppression of women's rights. The place where we are is here because of the labor and presence of women. We must acknowledge systems of heterosexism, and that harm all genders. We must acknowledge that pe the people with disabilities unable to access this space because of physical and institutional barriers, the place where we are is missing some of the people, the people are still alive. So we are acknowledging physical and cultural genocide. We are acknowledging erasure and denial. We are acknowledging institutional and structural oppression. These are the tools that were used and are still being used to make this place where we are. This is where we begin. And this is where we begin to make it better. We acknowledge the depth and strength of the communities collaborating over generations to reclaim and create justice. Now this was the network of ensemble theaters first national gathering in the Southwest. And the work here was curated and organized with such thoughtfulness and generosity. And we are so grateful. A few days ago in Tempe, we spoke about the power our shared practice creates. Ensemble theater demonstrates a microcosm of democracy in action. And we asked ourselves, where are we? Who are we, where are we going, and what we want to become? And today in Tucson, we're going to explore what answers and new questions have been generated in our time together. In this moment of state and individual violence, weekly hate crimes where bombs are sent in the mail, African Americans are murdered on sight, a synagogue is attacked in an act of horrific anti-Semitism, and troops are being sent to the border to threaten asylum seekers, we must explicitly state and live our values of equity. This is a time for course correction, which is why we named this moment together reroutes. We're forging new paths that are new to some and stewarded by wayfinders for generations. And we are so grateful to the elders who shared their history with us here, the performers and change makers who shared their practice with us here, the artists who shared their work with us here. In the next hour, we are going to reflect and process verbally and through physical embodiment and visually and at the end, Alicia and Shireen are going to give us a few final remarks. It'll be a chance for others to also maybe say, hey, come do this with me elsewhere. Um, so I'm just going to finish by introducing myself and then asking my colleagues who are going to be helping us to uh, lead and shepherd this final moment together to do the same. My name is Claudia Alec. I'm co-president of the board of the Network of Ensemble Theaters. My gender pronouns are she, her, they, theirs, and my access needs are fully met. I'm going to pass the microphone on to my next colleague who's going to help us do our next section. Six, 
Okay, here's one if you can come join us back in this modern day. We're gonna share in a moment, we're gonna share our images and our sounds with each other. Group one, y'all can come right over here. The way this is going to work is I'm going to call your group number. You're going to share. We're going to have like 10 to 15 seconds of popcorn reflections and then we're going to move on to the next one. Cool? Clear? I'm going to maybe not stand here because it's weird and um, <laughs> who wants to go first?
had a chance or found the right time to give voice to your thoughts during our time together, um, I want to make a special invitation to you to share. Um, uh, if your challenge is um, that uh, you find it difficult to share, then I encourage you to um, uh, step into that challenge and share. Um, if your challenge is that you find it difficult to listen, I invite you to <laughs> step into that challenge. <laughs> um, I'm just going to sit for one minute and think about what you're going to take with you. Um, now, if you'd like to share, um, we're just going to do this popcorn style. If you're moved to share, please feel free to speak up. I can't. Uh, I really can. I can see you all if I keep spinning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's let's just try. If you find if you're moved to share, and if we come to the end, we only have about ten minutes, and you're still sitting with something. Um, we also invite you to share it on the board over here. So this is not your only chance, but it's a good chance. What are you going to take? Uh, urgency and hope for further connections. How much I love the desert and how good a lesson is to say that to really get it, you got to get close and down low. Mm -hmm. Walking and asking questions at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Community. Unity that extends beyond boundaries and support. Understanding whose land we're standing on. The necessity of decolonization and investing in those most impacted. Who is running it? Who profits from it? Were you invited by the source community? And is it religious or spiritual practice that deserves respect?
decolonization of institutions and systems and processes. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Respect in opposition. The importance of roots and branches. Humility for the vast amount of privilege that I hold and the, the agency I have to make visible those that are not seen. and other nourishment. Who is your work for? Promote joy. Responsibility to name harm. One final moment. Thank you. Um, thank you for your generous presence, everyone. Um, invite you to continue to contribute takeaways to the board and to others beyond this circle. And the paper will stay up for about another half, 20 minutes after we're done. So if you want to add to this, please. This is a community document. Uh, and um, and to think about these um, uh, these questions, what do I have to offer? What do I need? Um, and share those with others as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Alicia for our final closing. Thank you so much.
All right. Uh, thank you to our team of board facilitators who just walked us through all of that. Uh, which means I also get to thank the whole board. Um, some of you have just been up here, but could you all stand or indicate, please, that you are currently on the net board? <laughs> beginning of every calendar year. If that's something that you might be interested in, be in touch. <laughs> uh, as we close out, um, this is also a chance for me to thank again our partners. Um, we did a final thank you for our Tempe partners as we left that space. So I want to use this time to, to specifically uh, give thanks to our partners here in Tucson who have been amazing, amazing collaborators um, really deep community thinkers um, and providers of space and all kinds of resources. Uh, Borderlands, Flam Chen, Many Mouths, One Stomach, The Scoundrel and Scamp Theater, and Visit Tucson. So thank you to them. days have presented as panelists, as artists, uh, you have been open in conversations as participants, so I want to thank all of you for that, and particularly those of you who stepped forward to bring uh, content into the space with us. Thank you. Uh, so this is my biggest thank you. Uh, next, next staff, st stand up where you are. Out for doing this documentation over here. Um, please please uh, give, uh, take pictures and post on the social medias of, of that. That would be great. Uh, let's give a round of applause to Alicia, our personal heartfelt thank you to uh, Nicole and Park, who uh, I'm still standing because of, um, and Jake, uh, who is, uh, as I said before, a great artist and a great partner. Um, uh, I just want to say that, and thank to all of you for going with the flow. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, so, my biggest, biggest, biggest announcement is uh, once we leave this space, I'm locking the keys in here. So I will not have access to this space once I'm out. So everything that you brought in must go with you. I will not be of help to you after I'm out of this space. Uh, so please, please, please do not leave anything behind because I won't be able to help. Um, and then if there's a transportation handout in the back, if you have questions, about transportation tonight, public transportation around All Souls 
and different bus, bus routes and things like that. If you have it, what's also very helpful is the All Souls Procession app that has a, a route on it as well. Um, those are my announcements, and I will pass it to Alicia, who's been to the All Souls Procession, so she has more insight into details. And not only that, we have locals and other folks in the room who know a lot more than I do. So, um, thank you, Shireen. <laughs> Okay, uh, also for those of you who are like, wait, wait, remember I said that I had that thing I wanted to tell people? Yes, we remember when we're finished with the logistics, there's gonna be some space for that. So don't sit there nervously worrying that that's not gonna happen, it will happen. Okay, uh, so this right here, our time together here, concludes the net portion of our programming, which means from here until when you leave, you're pretty much on your own together as you want to be, but on your own. Um, so, as Shireen mentioned, uh, the, there is a procession guide uh, on the app that we suggest you download that has way more answers to many more questions than we could possibly know to tell you. Uh, so you should really look there for most things first. Um, but some brief notes. So the lineup starts around 4 p.m. and some of this information is in your program as well, if you've been looking there but it'll start around 4 p.m. The procession actually goes at about six, but it gets really, really, really crowded by six. Um, I'm gonna encourage you, uh, because of what's happening with us at the finale in the VIP section, which I'll talk about in a minute, as you line up, you're gonna wanna be as close to the front as you can get yourself. That means either get there early, or it means make your way to the front as you get there. And I say that because at the finale, uh, as part of your registration with NED, we have secured access for anyone with a NET badge to have access to the VIP section at the finale ceremony. This means that you will get to be in an area that is at the closest part to the fantastic spectacle that happens. You'll be able to see all of the amazing things happening. It means you'll have access to a buffet dinner. It means you'll have access to some seating and some tables. The way you're gonna get into that section is with your badge. I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> you're gonna get into that section with your badge. If you don't have it, I'm not gonna be able to help you because I won't be right there. Okay, so really, make sure you have your badge. Um, for those of you who might be wondering, I don't know, I got some mobility stuff, I don't know that I really want to walk the route, but I want to be at the end, I want to see the finale. Um, there will be a team of us, including me, who are going to show up early to that VIP access area and kind of try to claim some space. Uh, it isn't a situation where you can reserve specifically, but you know, you can claim some space for yourself. So if you'd like to be part of that group, we're gonna show up around 6.45-ish to that area and just kinda of hang out. So come hang out with me and some others if you'd like to do that. Um, the VIP area, as you are coming in the procession, you'll see the big field uh, where the finale is happening and it's kind of right toward the front of that and you'll sort of veer over to the left and you'll be able to see sort of an area where you're able to get access. Um, Adam, others involved, is there something more specific that would be helpful? What can you see that identifies yeah. it? Uh, for the front? Um, I mean, just go towards the staging area. You, know, you can't really miss where the, <laughs> the staging is. There's a huge vertical, like, panel of LED screens. Um, and um, a lot of huge trussing, um, kind of like building out the stage. Um, yeah, and the seats will be out there as early as four too. So, like, yeah, if you don't want to start at the beginning, you can go directly to the finale site. Yeah, and just, and just hang out. And it's pretty. It's still pretty clear. Like, no one really shows up until between five and six. That the like people who don't want to walk in the credit, they just go to the finale site. Should we go earlier than than six forty-five if we're trying to kind of hold on to some space? What would you uh, recommend? Yeah. What I, time? Uh, I would say. No later than six. Okay, six o'clock. Um, and also, some of us will make sure we're there at six, and then others who want to kind of join later, you can do that too. 
Um, we're almost to the point of questions. Uh, I know I said I can't help you, and you can look in the uh, All Souls Guide for most of your questions. That said, um, it can be challenging to make phone calls because of the noise at various points. Um, if you are truly in a situation where you need help from us specifically, I'm going to give you my cell number right now, and you should text me, and I will try to sort out what... Yes. I hate to be that person, but I could not find my name tag this morning. I'll look again, but what if I can't find it? Mm -hmm. uh, Nicole, Shireen, do we have access to make replacement tags for folks who need them? are having this issue at the moment that you're thinking, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> great suggestion from Leslie back here that if you know that you are leaving or you know that you're not planning at being at the procession or at the finale and you want to hand in your tag so that it could potentially get reused, that might be a way we can help each other too. Uh, other questions? Yeah. Can I, I knew you went over it, but I'm still a little confused. Okay. My apologies. So what I, if I'm understanding correctly, what you're suggesting is we show up to the procession at around four or five o'clock to put ourselves in the front of it, walk the entire length of it, and then when we get to the staging area, look for something that is the <laughs> VIP? I didn't catch that part. There's these barricades that are gonna be demarking like the, the front of the stage with a bunch of seating and tables. Everybody else stands like behind that. And we so get to go through the barriers. That's, uh, yeah, the and so you got so your badge. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's like so, but, that, but that is the idea is that we walk in the, towards the frontish part of the procession. If you are choosing to walk from the beginning of the procession, I encourage you to get yourself as close to the front as you can. Okay. There are many other options. You can not walk at all and just go to the finale. You can not go all together. You can stand along the side of the route at any point, like even just a few little bit out from where it's over, and hop in to the front as it comes by. So it's, it, uh, as you heard on the panel yesterday, it is very sort of fluid and free form and sort of um, everyone self-regulates. Um, yes. well, you know, if we chill at the finale, can we see the whole procession come toward us or does it dissipate before then? Uh, if, if, if you're at the finale site in the VIP area, yeah, like you will see a mass of people come in from a side of it, but um, once it gets to that site, like it kind of disperses, yeah. so people kind of like take over the entire city block that the finale stage is just a part of. Yeah, you don't see the floats and the puppets that they kind of silk up into the, the performance area. And, so and is there still, uh, I remember last year that there was a moment sort of during the finale ceremony that like groups and folks who had some things, some, like not yeah. floats, but like sure. some things actually did sort of a thing across stage. Is yeah. that? Yeah.
Yes. Yeah, because I'm just curious if, if you're at the front of it, you, you're not really able to watch it. So is there any advice for like the best viewing for the procession? Is that just to kind of hop in and out like that and wait? Um, I mean, I, if you want to watch the parade and see who else is in it, like you can also walk slower or get a little further into the parade. You're going to get lost in the density of people. You can also walk faster and go up front and like wait at the front uh, down the street. <laughs> Okay, so but maybe then it's like it's just gonna be like completely dispersed. Like all these people are gonna uh, slowly be walking out everywhere. That's a good idea to just like be at peace with I believe it is also live streamed. Is that something that lives after the fact? I don't know if this year we're live streamed. Oh, okay. I thought I had seen something posted. There might be a live stream okay. that there is. There's a chance that maybe if you feel like, oh, no, I didn't get to see, that maybe you could see. And if not this year, there would be ones from past years that you'd at least be able to get a sense of the full scale. Yeah. Super quick. How long does that procession, so it, it takes off about at 6 o'clock? At 6 o'clock, it takes at least, uh, it takes about like an hour and a half. Oh, wow. It walks at it. It's like only walking a mile, only three miles to the finale site. Yeah. It would take about an hour and a half for like all the people to come. Probably almost two hours for the end of the parade to get into the finale space. Oh, okay. There's a banana. Yeah. Thanks. 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 choose to spectate and watch, um, but the, the core of what it is is really about being part of the group walking together mm -hmm. rather than watching mm -hmm. other people walk by. So for mm -hmm. what that's worth. Mm -hmm. uh, other pressing questions? How important is it to be like in some kind of, you know, costume or makeup or? It's up to you. But I mean, where I think it's very invented. People wear all sorts of costumes. This is where I think the appropriation comes in. Like, yeah. they'll put, you know, if you want to put the skull on your face, that's are you appropriating. Yeah. Yes, you know, yes, you are. So yeah, like you will, you will see people have uh, set up with tables doing uh, paid, you know, having people pay them to do face painting and that kind of thing. So that is one of those moments to ask yourself your but questions around. But a lot of people, you know, put on makeup that is, you know, their own design or you know, people wear collaborative costumes. And some people just walk without being in costume. Yeah, right. of anything. Okay. You're walking for your Uh, any 
anything that can burn, basically, you can put into uh, their little vessels that they then take to the urn on your behalf if you're not close enough to get to the urn yourself. Other pressing questions about tonight? Okay, I think we now have our space for those who had other things they wanted to offer to the group. I know you had one. I know someone else had one. Uh, Eric had one. Why don't we start with you both? Hey ho, I'm Pamela Hollings from Fools Fury Theatre and I wanted to uh, remind those of you who already know or let you know that every other summer we have a festival of ensemble theatre in San Francisco and Oakland and please look on our website Fools Fury and apply and come. Um, we also do an annual winter celebration called the Celebration Provocation with Libations. And this year we are asking for five minute or shorter uh, submissions of writing in any form whatsoever that could be presented. Uh, things we're specifically asking for, items of writing that um, move the soul. So it's very wide open. Thank you. I'm Eric Coopers with the Cal State East Bay Inclusive Interdisciplinary Ensemble, and we as an ensemble were particularly moved by standing with Saguaros, and we are going to head back there this afternoon for more in-depth duets and some hiking, and we wanted to just open it up to anybody that would like to join us. We might have a few spaces in our van, I'm not sure yet, um, but we could find a way to meet there. If you are interested, I'll be sitting right back here as we break and just come on over and we'll make a very loose plan together. We're probably gonna go to lunch first and then head up there and then come back in time for the procession. So please come join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joanna will correct me if I miss something. Um, right, so excited to be here that we're forgetting what's gonna happen for us next on Thursday. Um, we're hosting a very, very, very small, but possibly significant kind of uh, group of social theater um, companies. This was inspired or promoted by a group called Caravan Next from Europe. And it's mostly an Italian group, but they've been traveling all around. I think it's also a European thing. They're coming to the United States and just happens to be on Thursday. Um, Irondale Theater uh, is graciously hosting um, Bond Street will be there, this caravan, next group. Um, what city is this in? This is going to be on New York City, Thank of course. <laughs> what other city could it be? Okay, inclusivity. <laughs> so, the, it also includes uh, Ping Chong, uh, a theater of the oppressed New York City. Uh, Touchstone from Pennsylvania, of uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Irondale, Bond Street, and Caravan and, and, and Yeah. So, um, if you can, you can either talk to us or uh, uh, email Michael or Joanna at fonts.org, and we'll be make sure to send you more information. I don't know who's going to be in New York next Thursday, but if you are, you're, everyone is welcome to come. There's no cost or anything. It's all on the fly. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, I am Joe Topper with Carpetback Theater. That's my bro worker, Jonathan. We just want to extend a heartfelt invitation to the Carpetback Theater Inc.'s 50th anniversary celebration that starts in April of 2019 with Stephen Sapp from Universes um, directing a remount of our original piece, Swapper. So there will be things throughout all of the year, um, and so please visit October our October 19th, you can come to the gala. Gala, October 19th. Point being, all of this information that will be going on throughout the year will be on our website, carpetbagtheater.org, and that's T-R-E. So please join us at some point in 2019 to celebrate our 50th. I'm going home. Drive people to the polls. There's an election on. Tuesday.
Tuesday. I'm not telling you how to vote, but vote blue. <laughs> and, um, and, and I just want to call out to all of you who are also doing such things as texting, phone banking, canvassing, and poll watching, and helping at the polls. Uh, this may be, I'm not saying they're perfect, this may be the most important election we've ever seen if we're going to stop outright fascism. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Yay. For those of you who have been asking, oh, I need to get back to Phoenix tomorrow, um, I just pulled up. The Greyhound has eight trips daily, and it's $14 to go from here to Phoenix tomorrow. One way. There's also the Arizona shuttle that leaves hourly. That's a little more expensive, about thirty-five dollars. So just a quick Google: Greyhound or Arizona shuttle can get you back. Yeah. There's a new bus called Blitz yeah. bus, and it's five dollars. Or local hot tip. Can you spell that again? So. Get home and vote. <laughs> I'm gonna step away from the camera for a second and just say um, I work with HowlRound, um, and I know some of y'all know we do a lot more than live streaming. We also uh, have a bunch of different platforms. We host convenings. We have a journal. If you're interested in writing for HowlRound or learning about any of the other platforms that we offer, please let me know. Uh, they are free and open for the community to use, and it depends on the community. We need all of your voices in order to, to keep it going. So uh, feel free to just come grab me um, when I'm not behind the camera. Go back. Can we get <laughs> We have this thing called the School of Fierce Play that we recently launched in Oakland, um, but we're now also starting to bring it other places. So we have kind of a certain methodology that we do, and if folks are interested in that, they can talk to me or Amy, who's over there. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Last chair. Okay, uh, I have one last thing I want to say, uh, which I had meant to say, but uh, Jerry's reminder about politics and where we are um, brings it all the more to the forefront for me. There is one name that I have not mentioned yet. Uh, that had a whole lot to do with us being here and put the initial bug in my ear about, I think we should bring that to Arizona. Um, and that is someone who is not here with us because he's taken a, a year off of his life uh, as a maker of work to be the operations manager for a campaign in Northern Arizona uh, that there is uh, significant heat behind. Um, some of you may have seen an ad that kind of went viral that was about uh, Gozer. Um, uh, the man whom I'm about to name, Jay Ruby, uh, was one of the forces behind that ad. Uh, he's working for his opponent, um, and he has not been with us here this weekend because, because right? Uh, there is a small chance that he might be with us tonight, um, but I wanted to just sort of back up for a moment and say, so Jay Ruby from Carpetbag Brigade, uh, which is based here in Arizona, uh, when we were in Chicago two years ago, at the end of the wrap-up session like this, waited and waited and waited until sort of a bunch of conversations happened, and came up to me and sat down and said, I think we need to bring that to Arizona. Um, and so that is how all of this started. So it would be remiss not to say that he's not in the room, but his presence here is huge, and he might be with us tonight. So thank you, Jay. I think we're going to call things to a close. I think we might even be a few minutes early, thanks to our board facilitation team, who are the best. Um, you know, everything that NET does, we do as co-creation. We do as a community. NET is all of you. This conference is all of you. Um, so I just deeply, deeply thank all of you. It is a, a true, true honor and privilege to get to do this on behalf of you all in this field every day. So thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> However you 
choose to spend the rest of your time here before you head to your home locations or elsewhere. I hope you have a wonderful, fruitful, thoughtful time. I wish you safe travels home, and thank you for being here.